The John Ford Podcast. Number one among people who listen to us all the time. JohnFord.radio. And here we go again. Hi there, it's your, uh, your buddy, your pal, your chum, John Ford, in for another evening rancor. I do believe this is evening rancor. <laughs> well, anyways, thanks for uh, joining us here today. Uh, you know, I don't want to be like these things get dated sounding, but I've been watching this Brett Kavanaugh thing. Uh, and uh, the best thing that could have happened. You know, if you, if you listen to this in a week or a month, um, you, you know what happens. But uh, wow, what a trip, man. What an absolute trip. I personally am of the opinion that, uh, you know, all politicians by their very nature are really just liars, criminals and thieves. And, and I've believed this, you know, since the day that I first started paying attention to politics, which might, you know, go back to, uh, you know, when, when I was a kid, elementary school, one of my favorite shows was Firing Line with uh, William F. Buckley. <laughs> That's got to tell you something, man. Other kids were watching cartoons. I was watching Buckley. Uh, you know, I think it was the way he sat in the chair, you know, kind of off kilter and everything, you know, and, and his speech patterns. I remember my grandfather walking into the room and saying, what are you watching? I said, I don't know. This guy's kind of interesting. And he looked at me like, why is a 10-year-old kid watching William F. Buckley? But I think there was, you know, some pride in there, even though he was you know, Kentucky liberal, man. Bloody anarchists. Buckley wouldn't have been uh, somebody he would have approved of uh, at, at all. No way. No. Anyway, so, you know, on to the Kavanaugh thing, which I am not going to talk about. It's just sort of a position of interest. You look at what's happening. You look at what's happening and, and not even speaking politically, but it's like we've reached this age, you know, where the Title IX thing from uh, the college campuses has spilled over into the real world. And all you have to do is just accuse somebody of something. You know, it, it doesn't matter whether they're guilty or not. If we accuse you of something that, you know, we believe is the new uh, the new thing to accuse people of in this day and age. Which would be like the Me Too thing. Yeah, right, I guess. Something smells around here. Then you're automatically guilty, or we just assume you're guilt. And I think a lot of this comes from the Internet. I think the Internet is basically where this has come from. You know, we always had such high hopes and dreams for the Internet in the beginning. You know, I mean, it was like it was going to democratize everything, right? People were going to talk to each other. And we're going to share information. Man, it, it is so cool. It, it has just gone into this giant cesspool of crap. It's nothing more than just people yelling at each other. It doesn't matter whether you're, you're, you're going to come to some great conclusion, whether you're going to come to uh, you know, some understanding, greater understanding of the world, how you fed in it. Uh, you know, and what's important, you know, what matters is that you win. With very few exceptions, very few exceptions these days on the Internet. And I would maybe point to the intellectual dark web, man. The the whole thing just degenerates into this giant swine pig pile goo, disgusting, horrible, monotonous, filthy, raunchy. It sounds exactly like that. We all had such high hopes for the Internet. What makes you think that? Article on CNBC yesterday, a, the billionaire New York, L.A. Times, well, it's a New York Times owner, the billionaire L.A. Times owner <laughs> now says that social media is the cancer of our times. Something smells around here. I have a hard time arguing against that. Now, this guy, who I, he's got a Korean sounding name, but he, uh, I guess he's from uh, South Africa originally doesn't look like what you'd particularly think your typical South African would look like. Not that I know what a South African looks like. Patrick Soon Schoing. Schwang. <laughs> oh, I gotta be careful there. Rated R. Patrick Soon Schwing. He says the short attention span we're creating in this millennium is actually very dangerous. You don't say so. The new owner of the LA Times. He goes on to say... It is the unintended consequences of social media. I, you know, I don't even have a Facebook account. I mean, I created an account, you know, shortly after it went public, you know, after what drifted from its original beginnings of the campus thing in Harvard and then became public. And I had an account for a while, I think maybe six months, and I deleted it. I said, this, this is nonsense. 
This is a time suck. I don't trust these people behind it. And to this day, I do not have a Facebook account. I deleted it a long damn time ago. And, you know, just because you delete that Facebook account, it doesn't mean they're not paying attention to what you're doing. It doesn't mean that they don't know what site you're visiting. It doesn't mean that they don't even know what you look like, right? They do know what you look like because there's all this shadow information that Facebook collects. So let's say you don't have a Facebook account, right? But somebody takes a picture of you and, you know, your dog and them and, you know, on an outing somewhere or whatever. That picture ends up on Facebook. They, they interpolate that picture and they will find a way to associate that picture with you and the other information that they have on there. As an example, there was a guy who's a computer science professor. Uh, his name is Alex Mislov. You can check out this story on Slashdot. This was on yesterday. Facebook is giving advertisers access to your shadow contact information. He studies how privacy works on social networks, and he had this theory that Facebook is letting advertisers reach users with contact information collected in surprising and unknown ways. What he did was, it gets kind of complicated, as lots of tech stuff does, and it'll send your brain into a whirlwind. He directed an ad that he bought on Facebook to display a Facebook account connected to the landline number for Alan Mislov's office, a number that he had never provided to Facebook. He ended up seeing the ads within hours. So, you know, there's been a lot of computer guys that have been saying, man, they're doing this. They're keeping this shadow information on you. Even if you don't have a Facebook account, they know your name. They got your number. They got your shoe size. They know what kind of underwear you wear. They know how often you shave. They know what your dog eats for breakfast. A lot of people said, oh, no, they're not doing that. Oh, they're good people, those Facebook people. That Mark Zuckerberg, he's a great guy. And in reality, this just goes to prove it, this article that was on Slashdot. Within hours, this guy didn't have a Facebook account. Within hours, he ended up seeing the ads. So you don't think they're paying attention to you? Buddy, I got news for you. I'm going to pray for y'all. Further into the pit of filth we go. I do have a Twitter account. Hey, but I don't get involved in, like, arguing and yelling at people on there. Or even take a, a site that I, that I love, that I have been visiting for years, and I used to even have one of their premium accounts, which I paid for, and that is FARC.com. And when I was doing radio, man, that was like the gold mine. Because if you, if you end up in total FARC, <laughs> that's what you pay for. Man, you're going to end up in total FARC. But total, total FARC, what it does, it, FARC's one of the original aggregation, news aggregation sites. But if you... Uh, purchase a total fark you get to see all the articles that people submit and it was just an you know a veritable gold mine for doing a radio show because you see all these thinking articles but it just it just became such an echo chamber hallelujah even though i liked looking at all the articles i couldn't support it anymore i'm not giving these guys my money anymore it's just people yelling at each other it's like 4chan light right it's so sad. We all had such high hopes for the internet. But what has it become? It ain't very pretty. No. I'm the happiest guy. He's the luckiest guy. Cause I just bought a new Ford. From a wonderful dealer. Wow, what a dealer. For a Ford or a fine used car. With me this afternoon is the Right Honourable Mr. Norman Nimrod Awax, MP, a junior minister at the Treasury. Can I just begin by asking why, with manufacturing output down and sterling showing a steep decline on world markets, are you wearing a giant rabbit costume? I'm sorry, this is trial by television and I'm not standing for it any longer. I'm sorry, I came here in good faith to discuss real issues, not to be pilloried by some... The John Ford Podcast.